yes our college bilzoro mahavidyalay is, is affiliated to guwahati university and was established in the year 1986 in a degree science college having 10 departments out of which six departments having major course they are say unique character it also accommodates study cam examination centers of three universities that is igno kk hindik state open university and idol of guwahati university where students can take admission and avail distance mode of learning in undergraduate and pg courses bridgeram vidyalay was recognized by ugc in the year 1998 and it was assessed twice by nak mangalwar in 2004 and 2015 as you know due to the covid 19 pandemic situation normal academic uh, activities of all higher educational institution of the country is stopped apparently the whole world is at stand still in this uh, grim situation we have no option but to go online in every possible way to make students intellectual level fresh to make more vibrant or to make them curious about new frontiers of science keeping this in mind iqs of the college has uh, started a series of invited popular lecture on different interesting and thought provoking uh, topics today's topic on from uh, modern science uh, to the mind of god is a very interesting topic and frankly speaking i have no idea about the overall theme of the talk nor i have discussed about it with our honorable speaker but only i can guess is that the topic may show a relationship between physics and philosophy or philosophy of science or the nature of nature philosophy played a crucial role in the two revolutions of 20th century physics namely relativity and quantum mechanics and it continues to contribute to foundational research in theoretical physics a journey from modern science to the mind of god may be an inquiry into the everyday experiences and facts of life that are as mystifying as they are obvious and ordinary from common place uh, phenomena like language and reproduction to such enigmas as energy life consciousness mind mind power and the laws of nature science brings us face to face with magic and mystery in fact the world is nothing less than a wonderland some sensory world great questions need great answers like is there any conflict between religion and uh, science what did the pioneers and prophets of science think about god what happened before the big bang is there a possibility of the theory of everything our resource person professor rasput sir will deliver a popular talk on this interesting topic and i am sure everyone interested in philosophical aspects of science will be greatly benefited from it professor rasput sir needs no introduction to the participants of assam he is a great teacher whose teaching whose teaching techniques reminds us what we have read about the great uh, physics teacher uh, author of many popular best selling books like surely you are joking mr feynman what do you care what other people think or the famous feynman lecture series he was another non other than uh, nobel laureate dr richard philip feynman i welcome you all to this popular lecture and hope that it will be enjoyable and fruitful one thank you all thank you principal sir for your welcome address our next agenda is invited talk on the topics from modern science to the mind of god before inviting our honorable resource person for today's lecture i like to introduce our resource person with our participant as principal already mentioned that he is known to everyone but for our student only i like to introduce our resource person with our student may i now request dr bolen choudhury associate professor department of physics vidya mahavidyalaya to introduce our resource person with our student and participant over to dr balen choudhury sir 
Thank you, Mr. Baglari. Good morning, respected principal, Dr. Khalindu Kumar Sharma, Bijara Mahavidyalaya. Respected to this this person on this webinar, respected my colleagues, participants from different institution colleges. It is my pleasure to introduce today's research person on this webinar. He is a renowned physicist researcher. He is Professor Amanda Rasputcher. I welcome you, sir. Professor Rasputcher did his BSc and MSc in theoretical physics from Delhi University. He did his PhD in condensate physics from IIT Madras. He started his teaching career at Dibrigo University in the year 1990. Professor Rasputcher was at Dibrigo University till 2007. He then left Dibrigo University in 2008 to join as professor of theoretical physics at Aramaya University, Ethiopia, on an invitation by the Ethiopian Ministry of Education. He stayed there till 2015. He was then invited to join as professor of physics at Royal Global University, Guwahati, in 2019. Rasputcher's field of research interests are advanced quantum mechanics, superconductivity, parapetism, and cosmology. Professor Rasputcher publishes research papers in most prestigious journals from USA, England, Germany, France, Canada, apart from India. He was visiting professor, guest speaker at different universities and institutions, got invited as a key speaker at national global conferences universities. Thank you. Over to Mr. S.K. Baglari, coordinator, IQSC, Bichara Mahavidal. Thank you, sir, for your introduction of our resource person. Now, as we know that we all are waiting for our honorable lecture, honorable resource person lecture on the topics, may I now request our honorable resource person, Professor Omarinda Rasput, sir, to present his today's lecture. Over to you, sir, Professor Omarinda, sir. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Baglari. Yes, sir. And uh, our, my one time student and our principal, Dr. Khaninda Sarma, and all my teacher colleagues, and above all, my dear students. Without students, we are nothing that you know. So, good morning to all of you uh, for being present to listen to me. And it's a really a very happy occasion for me after meeting <clears throat> most of my ex students. I mean, through this webinar. <clears throat> anyway, uh, I won't like to waste time uh, on other things because the topic that I have chosen is quite, seems to be extensive. And uh, time is, of course, quite limited. And also, uh, this seems to be, you know, when I first choose this team, I was a bit worried when I brought the name of God here. Because being a physicist or a scientist, people might think how it is that they are talking about God. But remember one thing, that the concept of God and what people think about God is not the same as the scientists think about it. That you already know. In science, we never discuss God. We never try to prove or disprove the existence of God because that is simply impossible. Because in science, it is like a hypothesis and people take it for granted. Science has the spirit of discovering the mysteries, what is going on behind so many national in the natural phenomena happening in this universe within us, beyond us, around us, everywhere. Innumerable natural phenomena people simply did not understand earlier. It is because of this advent of science, especially modern science, that we are now in a position to understand why things are like that, why things are behave they do. So these are some of the things we'd like to put some light on. Now, before that, just I want to go back in time. You know, the first 
thinking seriously on this matter started with Plato and Aristotle. You know, everybody is familiar with Plato and Aristotle, the greatest thinkers of all time. You know, what they raised is a very important question, relevant even today. The fundamental question they raised is, OK, if you look around yourself, things, plants, animals, living things, non-living, everywhere, nothing is permanent. Everything is temporary. Everything is changing. There is birth, there is death. Even if you look at the mountains, don't think it is permanent. Over time, mountain, mountain turns into sand. It collapses, sands. <clears throat> so nothing seems to be permanent. So they wanted to know, then what is important in life? If there is nothing like eternal, everlasting, permanent, then what's the use of this life? This question they raised at the time. And they put a question mark. Is there anything called God? So they had some thoughts about God, but they could not come to any conclusion. That was the first philosophical thinking about the possibility of existence of God. Now, as you know, as time went on, <clears throat> there were more thinkers in different lines. When people could not understand, say, for example, things like, say, why there is thunderstorm, why there is earthquake, why there are so many calamities, why you fall ill, why there is death, why so much sufferings. They wanted to know what is the cause behind. When they could not understand what causes all these things, they thought that something must be there behind. And they introduced the concept of God. It must be God, some unknown force, that is responsible for all these happenings in this world. Now, this God is a different concept because if something goes bad, they blame God. If something goes right, they praise God. So God was made responsible for everything. And religions were there. Later on, religions, organized religions came into being. And again, God found a central place in all the religions. And as you know, uh, these things are going on even today. Now, looking back to now 16th and 17th century, that is the most revolutionary period in the evolution of human civilization, human thinking, human philosophy. Because during this period, there is called the scientific revolution, which started with the big names like Copernicus, Kepler, Galileo, Newton, all are big names. Every student of science, actually every student are familiar with. Now, why they are famous? Because they showed that there is a different way of looking at nature, looking at this universe. And what is this way? This way is you do logical thinking, critical thinking about everything, and verify them through experiments. Unless you verify the things experimentally, then you cannot get at the truth. And this spirit is what is called scientific spirit. And rest you know, this developed. And till then, people did not know why things fall downward. Gravity was discovered. And this gravity was extended by Newton to planets, stars, extending the entire space beyond. And that is the greatness. Simple laws, law of gravitation, which was discovered by Newton. This explained how this solar system exists, how the planets are going around the sun, why galaxies are there, everything, how they are pulled together. These things were beautifully explained. But remember one thing, that when Newton, of course, he also uh, introduced these laws of motion, but the laws of motion that he introduced, especially the second law, they are applicable to our day-to-day -day life that you know, even the motions of uh, objects beyond the uh, 
uh, art beyond the world. These are applicable. But what is most interesting is the law of gravitation, because people did not know how these planets are going around the sun. But what is most intriguing, it was also to Newton, he was at a loss. Well, I have proposed gravitation, OK, but these things are so separated. So for example, a planet is so much separated from the sun, there's nothing in between. So in that case, why this attraction happens? What is the force? How it is caused? This question intrigued even Newton. And when somebody asked him, he had no answer. He said, OK, OK, I have found out the laws. But uh, how, why they are not falling into each other? I mean, or how this force acts at a distance? Maybe there is a God's hand. God is guiding their emotions. This was Newton's mind. So remember, this is a wrong concept that God does not happen or does not enter into the mind of a scientist. Sometimes it happens. Because when there is no answer, they think that there is something else beyond our thinking. So from that time, you know, even Newton was a very religious, you know. But in the open, he could not speak it out because he was a scientist. And already people were having faith on science, thinking that science will explain to us everything in this universe. So religion or concept of God is not, is not necessary to understand what is happening in this universe. Now, that is what. Now, also, let me tell you one thing that many people think wrongly that science is in conflict with God. This is a very wrong idea. Without knowing what God implies, we simply pass this sweeping comment. It is quite wrong. You are not clear what God means. Even today, nobody is clear what God means. We simply think that it is omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-pervading. But we simply assume it. So science is not conflict. There may or may not be. Let it be. We are not concerned. Let us devote ourselves to knowing what is happening here through experiments, through theories, through laws. And that is the religion of scientists. It is called the cosmic religion. Scientist religion is not this organized religion we talk about. It is cosmic religion. The entire universe, they worship. The entire world, the entire nature, they worship through their work. So this is the concept of God. Now, let me now come to the actual point. You see, till now, starting from Newton to modern physics, I will come. We see that and mainly we observe two types of universe. One is this ordinary visible universe, which we already see early morning, you get up and see everything around, beyond, sun shining, at night, stars burning. This visible universe is very common to us. But in the 20th century physics, we found another universe. Another universe was discovered that is called the invisible universe of the atoms, molecules, particles, all these things. Now, that also is a different kind of universe. We call it micro universe or quantum universe. What you see with our naked eyes and all that, you can call it the classical universe. Now, why you call it quantum universe? Because if you want to understand the mechanisms going on inside this invisible micro universe, you know, classical physics totally fails. Laws of classical physics are hopeless. So a new theory, a new type of thinking, a new type of philosophy have to be introduced. And that is called quantum mechanics. All of you know, I am not going to into details of quantum mechanics because I don't want to divert from my main topic. Now, but I will give you some brief ideas. What this, what are the most interesting uh, properties of this micro universe and how do you observe it? Now, you know, 
in the micro universe when you talk about atom we first talk about the electron we think about the electron then electron moving around the nucleus nucleus contains protons neutrons now the question is what is an electron this question is a very very uh, intriguing very intriguing and people did not understand in the beginning because you say when you say a classical particle a classical particle is always a, always a particle it is a definite position definite mass you can locate it you can see its trajectory that is the concept of a classical particle and there's also the concept of classical wave you see the waves on the sea rivers waves water waves sound waves, and these are we are familiar with in classical physics so there you know that a wave is always a wave a particle is always a particle they are incompatible to each other a particle cannot transform in itself into a wave nor a wave can transform into a particle that is the classical philosophy now look at the electron mr bagler can you show the first slide please first slide So you see, I'm just for the students. It is what I have shown here is that you see the beam of electrons passing through two slits, producing interference patterns. This is a very common experiment nowadays in uh, atomic physics, in uh, quantum mechanics. You see, electrons behave as particles that you already know electrons has a mass and e by m you can determine which was already done by jj thompson long back electron was discovered as a particle but in the 20th century what we found that electron also can behave like wave because when passing through two slits it shows interference patterns as shown by water waves or light waves so this is a very interesting phenomenon. This shows that an electron is not a classical particle, nor it is a classical wave. It is something totally different. It is simply a quantum particle or quantum entity which has two characters. It can behave as a particle and also behave as a wave. Now the question is, when it is a particle and when it is a wave, now, quantum mechanics says that before looking at the electron, before doing any experiment, you cannot decide. It may be a particular wave. What you can decide about is do some experiments. There are some experiments by which you can find its particle nature. But in that experiment, wave nature will be absent. And there are other experiments where you will find its wave nature. But their particle nature will be missing. Remember, so that both this aspect, particle and wave aspect, cannot be observed simultaneously. But they exist. This is the big difference between classical particle and the quantum particle. So this introduced a new, new type of mechanics, how to study the properties of electrons. What is the equation of motion? Because you cannot apply Newton's laws of motion or any wave equation separately because the electron shows what the properties so you must devise an equation you must formulate an equation which exhibits both particle property as well as the wave property of the electron mr bagler please show the next slide yeah now you see schrodinger equation all of you are familiar the great schrodinger he developed this famous equation in 1925-26. You see, IH less del psi del t. Now, this is a wave equation because it contains both time derivatives and space derivatives of the wave function psi. Now, you see that this is a wave equation, but this has no resemblance to any wave equation in classical physics. Why? You just notice the imaginary I is appearing here mass of electron is appearing here but in classical wave equation 
mass does not appear nothing like that only time variable space variable and the wave function that's all so this is a typical equation of electron which is both a particle and a wave so both characteristics are combined actually schrodinger in deriving this equation it combines both the wave particle duality of de broglie and also e equal to h nu that's planck's relation you are all familiar with so i am showing that now remember by the way the schrodinger equation is non relativistic this is true only when the electron velocity is very much less than the speed of light so it has some limitations but still this schrodinger equation was so successful that it could explain all the properties of the electrons especially why there are spectral lines by emitted by different atoms why you get definite lines of spectra all these things were beautifully explained and many other properties but still it had some limitations now then <clears throat> i am showing next dirac equation 1928 this is i personally think it is the one of the most important and revolutionary equation in entire physics yet discovered dirac was one of the most important intellectual brilliant intellectual of all time and although many people are not uh, famous uh, i mean familiar with dirac but remember he is one of the most famous uh, mathematician physicist now he also proposed another equation but this is relativistic relativistic means that is it is applicable to particles even with high velocities comparable to the speed of light so it is very very general equation and you see it's a rather complicated equation because here it is a, we call it a matrix equation alpha beta these are matrices so these are uh, the fundamental equations of quantum mechanics i wanted to show you now what does this equations give you now i'll first uh, restrict myself to dirac equation you see when you say it is a relativistic equation it gives the complete description of the electron the first thing is that till then we did not know why electron has a spin you know electron possesses a spin spin angular momentum it was dirac equation from which it naturally follows and those who are doing relativistic quantum mechanics are familiar with the calculations i cannot tell you about this calculation but it naturally follows and the result that you get exactly agrees with experiment till then people knew spin from experiment but there was no theory to explain this dirac equation was the first successful theory which told us why an electron must have a spin secondly dirac equation also predicts the existence of anti electron if there is an electron there must be an anti electron in general he said he said that if there is a particle there must be an anti particle if there is a proton there must be an anti proton and so on now this was is proposed he proposed the existence of anti electron theoretically and look at this brilliant idea just two years after positron was discovered experimentally and we know positron is nothing but anti electron that is the greatness of dirac theory now then you say this dirac theory also gives you a new interpretation of vacuum this is a very important concept in quantum mechanics vacuum now you say the concept of vacuum in classical physics is simply vacuum means where nothing exists simple vacuum means where nothing exists please try to understand what i say now according to dirac this is a wrong definition dirac says that vacuum is where nothing can be observed difference nothing exists and nothing can be observed dirac says there may be but if you can't observe anything even by experiments sophisticated experiments we call it vacuum 
This is called quantum vacuum. It has wide ranging implications philosophically and everywhere scientifically. Vacuum is where nothing can be observed. It's a beautiful concept. And you will see that this concept is behind the creation of this universe that I'll come to later on. This simple concept and this concept, how he brought about that, because with this concept, he brought the concept of antiparticle, which has been experimentally observed. So once you observe antiparticle, you have to accept Dirac's definition of vacuum. Now, coming to atom now, I'll just tell you. Because my main objective to show physical things happen in this universe. Because we always associate God with mysticism, magical, metaphysics. The same things appear from quantum theory. That's what I want to show you. Now you see, look at the atom. Everybody knows. We know that there is a nucleus and the electron is going around this nucleus. But do you know the size of this atom? It's unthinkable. Unthinkable. That is, we call it 10 to the minus 10 meter. 10, 10, to the, 10 raised to the minus 10 meter. So I think you can understand this. It's a very uh, less than nanometer and all that. Now, this size, if I want to tell you about this size, then, you know, just to give an example to the students, that if you have one centimeter length, atom is so small that this in, within this one centimeter length, you can accommodate 10 to the power eight number of atoms, 10 crores of atoms you can accommodate in one centimeter of length. Think of this atom, how small, insignificant. It may be insignificant, but look at now what is happening there in the atom. Atom, even in this insignificant entity, nucleus is there, about which electron is moving. Now, what is the speed of the electron? Can you imagine? I can give you some idea. Electron is moving around the nucleus incessantly with a speed of 10 lakh kilometer per hour, imagine. Can you imagine? Within the smallest region, a particle moving with a speed of 10 lakh kilometer per hour. Just imagine. Is it not magical? Is it not mysterious? And still the atom is stable. The hydrogen atom we found thousand years back, million years back, is the same hydrogen atom we find today. No change, eternal. But this eternal is maintained by this tremendous motion of the electron. Because if this motion doesn't exist, the electron will fall into the nucleus because of the attractive Coulomb potential. So who is forbidding this? Who is giving this stability? What is this intelligence working? That is the big question. Whatever be God or creator or whatever it is, the main spirit was to have this stable universe. And for stability, atom must be stable. And for atom to be stable, electron must go around nucleus with this tremendous speed. Only when atom is stable, molecules will be stable, matter will be stable, this universe will be stable, we will be stable, we will exist, our life will exist. So our whole existence depends on this atom, the existence and stability of the atom. This is one of the greatest discovery in quantum mechanics. Now, well, that is not all. Now we come to the nucleus. Now nucleus again is not a single particle. You know, it contains protons and neutrons. See. Such a small entity, smallest insignificant entity, electron, then you go to the nucleus, and within the nucleus, you find particles, protons and neutrons. Not only that, we have now discovered that even proton and neutron contains particles within them. Proton and neutron contains quarks. Proton contains three quarks, neutron contains three quarks. 
And you know, already all these are experimentally established that there are six quirks with flavors. We call them, the names are very exotic and exciting names. They have given up, down, top, bottom, charm, strength. These are called six flavors of quirks. And they are necessary to produce hadrons, to keep hadrons. Protons, neutrons, they are called hadrons in nuclear physics. Now, why there are quirks, you know? Because these quirks are responsible for nuclear strong force. These quirks bound together gives you stable proton. Quarks bound together gives you stable neutrons. So there are forces between quarks also. And the forces between quarks is called the strongest nuclear force. And remember, coming to the force, see the type of force we are talking about here. Now, if you consider electromagnetic force, it is either repulsive or attractive. And as you know, that when separation increases, the strength of interaction also increases. Separation less means more interaction, stronger interaction, separation more less means, uh, more means less interaction. Now, this is for gravitation or all other forces. But in this case, quirks, you know, you'll be surprised to know that if you consider the force between two quirks, this force increases if you want, if the separation between two quarks increases. Force increases directly with separation. Can you think about it? And when they are together, it is just like a spring and they are just like sitting together, but don't, you cannot separate them. Two quarks can never be separated. And even if you want to separate them experimentally, it is found that as soon as you try to separate them, so much energy is necessary that out of this energy, another pair of quarks will be produced. Quark, anti-quark, another hadron. So this is one of the greatest mystery of nature, force between two quarks. And maybe it is because, the, because of this that we have this nucleus proton neutron. So these are some of the most interesting uh, discoveries from higher energy physics. And, uh, and this physics is, again, let me tell you that this, we have this quantum mechanics coming, the relativistic quantum mechanics after that quantum field theory was developed, quantum electrodynamics was developed and quantum chromodynamics. What I am talking about, these quarks, quarks, nuclear forces, strong forces, weak forces, they are studied by chromodynamics. Electromagnetic forces are studied by quantum electrodynamics. So all the forces are studied by quantum magnetics. All fundamental forces, electromagnetics, strong nuclear, weak nuclear force, except gravity. Gravity doesn't fall into the quantum mechanics. And still now, we don't have any quantum theory of gravity. People are working on this, but still there is no convincing and final theory of quantum gravity. And this is the most fertile uh, field of research going on at present. Now, so that is your the world, the invisible world. Now, you see that you can now prove that whatever elementary particles you observe, large number of elementary particles are observed. You know, all these are ultimately composed of only 17 fundamental particles. This is another greatest discovery. Fundamental, most fundamental are 17. Six of them are quarks. Six of them are leptons. Leptons means electrons, the neutrinos and tau masons, uh, tau particles. And then five bosons. Bosons are responsible for forces. For electromagnetic force, you have photons. And then for strong forces, you have gluons. We've got gluons. And then for weak forces, you have W particles, Z particles. These you already know, I think those uh, from elementary nuclear physics. So now it is established that we understand the origin of all particles. What are the basic building blocks? Only 17 fundamental particles. I will tell you how they were produced in the universe that I'll come to uh, in the later part of my talk. Now, coming back. So atom, 
and the world of atoms, subnuclear atoms, subnuclear particles, all these things, you know, they constitute what I call the micro universe. And knowing this micro universe took so many years, starting from 1925 to even today it is going on. So now see how complex this world is, invisible. Thing is, now we might think, if it is invisible, how do you study its properties? How do you conclude all this? Remember, nowadays, so many sophisticated experiments are there that you can, you can, you, you need not see the particles, but you can simply study their imprints, their fingerprints. They leave their fingerprints. From these fingerprints, from the trajectories, trajectories are not actual, but they can leave the photograph of trajectory, how where they are moving in a cloud chamber or anything like that. So from that, you can conclude, you can do some data analysis and all that. You can conclude this is this must be this particle, that must be that particle. See, this is how things progress. And everything has been experimentally established, theory agrees. And ultimately, we have what is called the standard model of particles. This is the most successful model of all elementary particles, the standard model. But now see, in this standard model, model, initially, the model predicted that all particles should have no mass, massless particles. This was a big problem in the beginning. They, they explain all the particles, but without mass. Now the question arises, you know, what is mass? But I am not, even if I want to tell you about mass, it will take one hour. I, I'm not going into that uh, topic, but simply I'll tell you, I assume that you know what is mass, mass of an electron, mass of a proton. But what is this mass? Standard model failed to understand. But then Higgs and some other scientists, famous Higgs, they proposed a theory, mechanism, that there must be a new type of particle, a new type of field called Higgs field. This Higgs field is responsible for mass of a particle. This Higgs field, be, because of quantum field theory, you can show that Higgs field, whenever there is a field, there will be quanta of the field. This quanta behaves like particles. And the quanta, the quanta of this Higgs field is called Higgs bosons. So these Higgs bosons are proposed theoretically. And they said that when these massless particles happen to interact with Higgs bosons, they're called bosons, Higgs bosons, then because of this energy transfer from Higgs bosons, this manifested, this is manifested as the mass of the particle. The particle interacting with the Higgs field, they acquire mass from the field. That is how different particles acquire different masses. Different masses means what is the, how much they interact with the bos uh, this boson field, um, Higgs field or Higgs particles. So origin of mass was explained theoretically beautifully. But the question was, is it a hypothetical particle? Just to save the theory. Now, there was no answer till 2012, very latest. And all of you know, there was a big news, global news in 2012, big headlines, God's particle is discovered. The big he knows, God's particles is discovered. This God's particle is Higgs particle. Why it is called God's particle? Because physicists believe that once this particle is observed experimentally, we will know everything about the particles and our knowledge will be almost complete. So it is like a God-given particle. God was hiding this particle. God was kidnapping this particle. Now, when God is giving to us experimentally, we are happy, we are get thankful to God. That is why it is called God's particle. It is just uh, ironically, I mean, they call it. Now, this Higgs boson was discovered in 2012. You know what type of experiments we had to do? It is called the most expensive particle yet discovered. It took an amount of $10 billion to do the experiment, $10 billion, not rupees. And experiment was done 320 feet underground because high energy was involved. 
so that there is no risk. And a tunnel was built. This tunnel had a length of 17 miles. And through this tunnel, two protons were allowed to collide, coming in opposite directions with tremendous energy. And in that collision, so many energy particles were produced. And after data analysis, they found that there is another new particle coming with the properties of Higgs boson proposed theoretically. Whatever was proposed theoretically was found to be just exactly the same uh, with that particle discovered experimentally. That was the, one of the biggest discovery of this century. And you know, it was so important that it was discovered in 2012. Next year in 2013, the persons who proposed this were awarded Nobel Prize in Physics, unique. That's simply one, one hour after, one year after the discovery. So that shows the greatness of this discovery. <clears throat> Now, okay, so that I am telling about this micro. Now we come to the visible universe. Okay, so, but before I go to the visible universe, one thing is clear from this micro universe that we are now encountered with certain results, certain concepts, certain happenings, which is beyond our common sense. We cannot think about it as a normal human beings. The question arises, who made this? Why these things happen like this? There must be something behind which is super intelligence, only super intelligence being or super mind must be there. Because who thought about this? How this is possible? Because all this has been possible through mathematics, complicated mathematics, laws and all this. So this complicated mathematics or laws discovered by physicists, mathematicians, where were they before? Was mathematics there before physics or before mathematics we studied? This is a big question. We say that everything existed, whether it's mathematics or physics or laws, they already existed, but we have to discover them. And it is the fortune for the, it is the fortune of the physicists, mathematicians to discover this mathematics, the relevant laws. They were already there. The question arises, how they existed? What is the origin of their existence? This raises a big question. Who is responsible? What is responsible? Is there a God's mind or something like that? So this question arises. That is why I told you that modern physics, how we can go to the mind of God. Because if God we do not know, nobody has seen God and it's not possible. It may be a hypothesis, but at least we know. If at all God is there, assume that God is there, science enables you to read his mind. What is in his mind? How he, I mean, this built this universe. What, what thinking, what language? Who said there is a code language? This code language, we have to find it out, decipher it. And science has deciphered this code language. This code language is nothing but mathematics, abstract mathematics, physical laws, theories, concept, that's all. So all these are you know, products of some super mind, super intelligence, which science agrees. Most of the scientists think like that. Now, coming to the visible universe, that is already you are familiar with most of us. This visible universe, as you see, that Newton did not know about this universe. According to Newton, it was this universe is uh, static, infinite, existed, existed for all the time like this. And it is like that all the time. Neither there is past nor future. It existed for infinite time of uh, infinite time, and also it will exist for infinite time. That was this is uh, Newton's concept. You know why Newton said like that? Because Newton was afraid that if he says that this universe had a beginning, it was created at some moment, then he will have to answer the question: Who created? 
for which he had no answer. Oh, so he simply stated, no, no, no. Universe exists like this all the time. There is no question of creation or destruction like that. So that he simply avoided the question. Now look at this. 1929 I'm coming to. This Newton's concept of universe prevailed up to 1929. But before that, before 1929, another, the greatest of all physicists, Albert Einstein, he developed general theory of relativity in 1915, 1916. Okay. Uh, Kaglari, you can show that slide, I think. Yeah. This is a second quantization. This is a foundation of quantum field theory. After that, please, next slide. Yeah. This is the famous Einstein's equation of general theory of relativity, you see. On the left, it is space-time curvature. Here it is distribution of matter. Now, you see, this is the equation looks very simple, very simple. You know, all laws of physics are given by simple looking equations. But if you work it out, arriving at it requires a lot of Einstein, even a man like Einstein took 10 years, 10 to 11 years to arrive at this equation, this beautiful equation. You know, it is a tensor equation and highly complicated if you do calculations. Now, this is also called the relativistic theory of gravitation. Einstein's theory of gravitation is non-relativistic. It is relativistic because these things you can easily find in textbook and all that. Einstein's general theory of relativity is nothing but relativistic theory of gravitation. So once this equation was proposed by Einstein, People tried to find solutions on Russian mathematician. He solved these equations and he applied it to this universe because this is the equation of gravitation. So obviously it can be applied to the universe. And according to Einstein, you see, the gravitation is not a force. Gravitation is not a force. It simply arises because of bending of space and time. That is, this assume that the entire space-time is like a fabric. Space-time is like a fabric. So when a massive object occupies some region in this fabric, it goes down. You know, there's a, there is a, you know, depression, depression, depression is there. So when there's a depression, then any object coming nearby will feel this depression and would feel like attracted by that other particle. And if the depression is such that it, the other particle cannot go out, it will start moving about that object. This is the idea of gravitational force due to Einstein. So mass produces curvature of space-time. There's a famous saying that from Newton's theory, there's gravitation, that mass dictates space. Mass dictates space how to curve. And space dictates mass how to move. This is gravitation, Einstein's gravitation. It is simply interplay between space and mass, space and mass. The force is generated or it is communicated through space curvature. That's all. Curvature of space. So this is, but anyway, the details I cannot go through. Now, when solutions were found out, there were two possible solutions. This, this universe cannot be static first, theoretically, according to Einstein. It may either be expanding all the time or it may collapse also, collapsing as well as expanding. Two possibilities, two mathematical possible solutions. But Einstein was not happy. He was worried. How? How can it be? Because Newton said he also believed in Newton at the time in the beginning, that it is there. So. It, uh, he was at a loss and he did some mistakes, but anyway, I'm not going to them. Now, coming to 1929, this idea of Einstein was verified experimentally by Edwin Hubble, the famous astronomer. As you know, it was in 1929 that after a series of astronomical observations using big size teles um, these telescopes, you know, under the Three hundred inch lenses. He was looking. He and his group was looking into the night sky. 
in all directions and they were simply puzzled they found that these galaxies that we think of they are not static they are moving away from each other and as the distance increases the velocity increases so all are moving away from one another they were simply surprised and repeated and found this to be true in all directions of this space and you see this the speed of these galaxies were very very high lakhs of kilometers few lakhs of kilometers per hour and higher than that and the speed increases as you go away now this was one of the greatest epoch making discovery of all time that is we say the universe is expanding because galaxies are moving away from each other now let me tell you that though we say expansion of the universe actually it is the expansion of space time according to einstein's theory the, i told you space time fabric is the space time fabric which is expanding all the time and galaxies are put there at different places so it looks as if galaxies are moving away from each other so this is the experimental verification of expanding universe now the question is if the universe is expanding that is going away from each other now you just think of what was it say about say 10000 years ago if the separation of two galaxies is say you know some some say few say say uh, one lakh kilometer then 10000 years ago distance must have been less and again go back in time distance will be still less and there's nothing wrong go back in time and time and you will see that there must have been a time in the past when all the galaxies were together there must have been more because now they are expanding just as when you you know explode a bomb you know they were together all the pieces but then they are flying away it is like that so there must have been a moment when all the matter energy combined together must have been concentrated at a single point a single location that is called the point of singularity i'll come to that so according to this is called the big bang theory so big bang theory says now that there was a time when all matter energy were concentrated at a single point and suddenly something happened a tremendous explosion happened and because of this space time expanded and slowly energy matter were formed atoms molecules stars galaxies everything this history is there no problem now uh <clears throat> baglari can you show the slides please this this is just the artist vision the big bang explosion what happened just at the time of big bang tremendous amount of energy liberated and next slide please now this shows you see this is the big bang the tip and this is slowly this is actually a vision you cannot see it is a just like a three dimensional surface you know our universe is a three dimensional surface of a four dimensional hyper sphere normal sphere is three dimensional real sphere but we talk here about hyper sphere four dimensional x y z plus time this four dimensions constitute what is called hyper sphere and x y z forms the three dimensional surface and this is the picture on three dimensional surface and uh, you see how starting from big bang and you know, ultimately galaxies stars were formed is just a visual idea to for the students and all these things now okay you can remove that slide mr baglari you can remove the slide now now uh now this now you see this picture because when this universe was expanding it's okay now the question arises what is a star like the sun because sun is our 
they are rest because of sun we are here because of the sun the world exists we exist so our more interest our interest will be more on the sun now the question is how this sun is giving us energy heat light at a constant amount at every moment what is what is mysterious is that there is not power cut in the sun all the time starting from billion years ago even to, till today sun is shining with the same brightness how is it possible now by the way let me tell you that this universe when it started that time can be calculated and two calculations we find that our universe was created uh, about 1400 crores of years 1400 crores of years ago the birth of the universe so now it is 1400 years old our universe or 14 billion years whatever you call it now about the sun sun is about 500 crore years old it is now 500 crores years of old you see but how it is shining now now you understand because of this quantum physics what is happening is this we call it it is a fusion process fusion reactions hydrogen atoms combined hydrogen a proton neutron combined giving deuteron deuterons tritons they combine giving helium atoms ultimately when helium atoms are produced tremendous energy is produced in the process fusion you know fusion fission they always produce tremendous energy so it is mainly a fusion process as you see that is ultimately from proton and neutron you have helium atoms produced and in this process but remember the fuel the fuel of uh, sun consists of protons mainly protons it is a reservoir of protons and out of these protons this is produced but the thing is you also need neutrons to produce helium and you will see that nobody understood how neutron is produced only after chromodynamics only after the uh, knowledge of quarks we now know how neutron is produced from a proton it is beta decay neutron can decay into proton and proton can also decay into neutron reverse beta decay this happens through weak interactions that is one quark quarks quarks of proton changes into quarks of neutron it is through weak interactions actions of uh, w basins so these things now well understood so ultimately although we used to say fusion now we say the source of energy and the ultimate source of energy from the sun is weak interactions we call it weak interactions but literally it is not weak it is giving us tremendous energy from the sun and it also follows that whatever in there in the universe sun ga galaxy only billions of stars form a galaxy but each of these constituents whether it is a galaxy or a star they have their own lifetime a star is born it passes through childhood it has an adulthood it will pass through old days ultimately a star will have to die similarly a galaxy and this is a beautiful prediction from general theory of relativity or from einstein's theory that nothing in this universe is eternal whatever is born whatever is created has to be destroyed will get annihilated only the time frame matters longer shorter that's all now this sun will live for another 500 crores of years but we don't have to worry 500 crores of years is a long time so these are some of the beautiful ideas but before the sun dies much before that this 
world will vanish. Because, you know, much before that, there will be stage of the sun, which is called red giant. It will, you know, it will just uh, be so big in size. It will, it will be inflated in size that it will engulf the orbits of the Earth, this Mars, and all that. And so much temperature will be generated that the ocean, this ocean, water of the ocean will start boiling. Mountains will start melting. Think of it. Much before that, living things will go. So your creation will go, but it should not feel deserted. Theory also says that if a star is dying somewhere, a new star is born somewhere. Daily, somewhere a star is born, a star is dying. This date and birth is a cyclic process going on in this universe. And this is true, not only for these things, which you call non-living things, but I feel that there is nothing like non-living things in this universe. Everything is living. Only thing is that the quality of life, the quality of this livingness, that is important. Degree of livingness. Nothing, nothing is non-living. Starting from the atom, tremendous motion. How can there be tremendous motion? if there is no life. Life is another name for activity, motion, self-motion, self-operated. So if this is the meaning, then life is everywhere. That is also in our philosophy. Our ancient philosophy is that hokolote prana se. This is a very scientific meaning. Life is everywhere. Only thing is that you have to find it out. You have to discover it. We should not boast that only we have life. No, it's everywhere. This is one of the greatest mystery of science, discovered by science. Now, okay. Already, I think, uh, Bagleria, how much time left? Five minutes or? Sir, go on, sir. No problem. Huh? Flexible time. We have flexible time, sir. Very interesting. Oh. We have flexible time. You are not on, getting sir. bored because huh? it's okay. No, sir. Okay, okay sir. Okay, very good. Take a few more minutes. You see, because now I am coming to some of the basic questions. You see, one of the most uh, important aspect of philosophy and religion had been, who are we? Where are we from? Where are we going ultimately? Nobody knows. But we are here. Why? Why the universe is like this? Now, when people ask, sir, why this universe is like this? Then I say, the universe is like this because you exist. If the universe were not like this, you will not exist. That's the argument. You exist because the universe exists. You are a part of this universe. If you say this universe, suppose I am a conscious human being. I have consciousness. I have feelings. I have emotions. Everything I can feel. Then if I'm a part of this universe, that universe also feels. Universe has consciousness. Universe has emotions. This is a great discovery from science. Everything is conscious. Let me tell you, a famous experiment was done in University of Sydney by a team of physicists. And the project was named Atma Project. You know, people are very much drawn towards Indian philosophy of thinking. They called it Atma Project. They wanted to see whether consciousness is present everywhere. And they did experiments for atom, of course, you already know, from the plant, starting from the plant living organisms, cells, organisms, then other insects, all animals, and ultimately human beings. And then ultimately doing some set of experiments over the years, they came to the conclusion that consciousness is present everywhere. And there is, it's like an energy level that is at the lowest level. You have these organisms, 
Oh, no, plants, plants you have at the lowest consciousness. They are also conscious. Then next higher is your insects and these small elements, these animals and all that. Then higher animals like that. Then ultimately you come to human being, the highest level of consciousness in this universe, highest level. But the question mark is there. This consciousness is not static. It is going up in the case of human being. You know, a human being of today and a human being of, say, 10,000 years back is not the same. The brain development, thinking development, IQ is not the same. Today, human beings are so intelligent, a strong IQ is there. So this consciousness has no end. And they put a question mark. Say, say we are ordinary human beings. So if you go a step up, do we have what is called super, I mean, some, you know, genius people are very, we cannot understand them, some, say, great thinkers like that, some religious leaders, whatever it is, we don't know, some spiritual leaders, maybe higher level, and still higher, the question mark, is it God, what do you think about? And is it that man is nothing but an image of God, God created man in his own image? through consciousness. That is why, because we are created in our own image, we are in a position to understand God's mind today. You can think of how God is thinking, how what goes on in his mind while creating about this universe. Again, remember, this God is not the personal God. According to our theory, if God creates this universe, God cannot be a part of this universe. He has created. His imprints are there. Footprints are there. He has simply produced the laws of everything, natural laws. And because of this natural laws, it is going on spontaneously. Because you cannot bring God inside the universe. What will happen? Simple answer. If you say that God exists here, as a personal God, then God cannot obey the laws of this universe. Because God has created this universe, so he must obey these laws. And according to these laws, God must be born, must be child, grow up, become old, must fall ill and die. Do you want a God like this? We have an image of God, something different, eternal, everlasting. So why do you bring it here? Forget it. Leave God because you will never find it. God never comes here. We say that if at all God is there, it is multidimensional. We are three-dimensional beings. This universe is three-dimensional. Real. God is in a complex space, higher dimension. And anything at higher dimension cannot be observed from a lower dimension. We are at a lower dimension. You cannot observe God if it is in a higher dimension space. You have to make some a special trip. I don't know how it can be done. This trip, wormholes or whatever that I am not going into those topics. But the interesting thing is that from a higher dimension, you look down upon the, you can always look down upon the lower dimension and see what is going on there and you can control. This is a new concept of God. I mean, I'm trying to interpret like that. It is my interpretation. So if at all you think of God, then you must think it in terms of something which exists in higher dimensions so that it is not visible, but the lower dimension, this universe will be visible to him. Now, this about the you know, creation moment, you see, how this universe was created, science has an answer, almost an answer. See, we now say that in the beginning, people ask sometimes that what was there before Big Bang? What was there? Before Big Bang, we say this question is meaningless. Because when you put the question before, you are putting the time frame, time, before, after time. But there was no time. Time 
was also created along with Big Bang. Time, space was created along with Big Bang. Don't say Big Bang was created in time. No, time was created with Big Bang. So the question is meaningless. However, still we have an answer. We say that nothing was there. It is formless, nothing. Complete vacuum, we call it quantum vacuum. Unobserved quantum vacuum. But from quantum theory, Dirac's interpretation, we know that this quantum vacuum, you know, is very highly active. Very highly active. That is, billions of particles, antiparticles are always produced and destroyed. You see, electron, positron can be immediately produced and destroy itself so that you don't observe their creation and destruction. It is not observable. This happens in such a small interval of time that it is unobservable. So we say that quantum vacuum means where this lot of activities, creation, destruction of particle, antiparticle are going on incessantly. But this we cannot, these are called virtual processes. Virtual means unobservable. And this has been verified experimentally. You can see by how you can, you can uh, 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 allow energy to interact with this vacuum, photons, then you will say suddenly photon disappears and antiparticle particle appears. So you can produce out of vacuum particle antiparticle by some energy. Now, where from that energy comes, you don't know. Now, what we say is that, that this vacuum, because of this activities of particle antiparticle production and uh, annihilation, it, it, sometimes it goes to a higher energy level, vacuum at a higher energy level. Then you know from physics that a system always tries to come back to the lower energy level. So, so vacuum is going to higher energy level, then suddenly it goes to lower energy level, and in that process, tremendous energy is liberated. This happened at the time of Big Bang. Suddenly, vacuum was excited, then it came to a ground level, the low energy level, and the energy was liberated. Tremendous. And space-time were created, and immediately, tremendous expansion was there. Tremendous heat and all that, so expansion will be there because of it. So this heat produced and it expanded. And because of this space-time expanded. Now, you know from physics that when there is expansion, cooling appears, cooling effect. Now, if cooling effect appears, what will happen physically? We say, if you, I give you a simple example. You say, in winter, in winter, you know, if you look at the glass pan, say you have a window glass pan, and uh, you see water droplets there. So when you say water droplets in extreme winter on the glass pan, we say that vapor has condensed. It's a condensation of vapor. Same thing happened here. When space expanded, there was condensation of space, condensation of energy, condensation of energy that gave rise to these particle structures. And the first particles produced like this are Higgs bosons, God's particle. And then further expansion produced six leptons, six leptons. And then this energy quanta bosons, other five bosons, proton and this uh, Photon, gluons, and everything will produce. So this is a history. So particles were produced because of the condensation of this energy in the space because of cooling effect. So this continued. And once you show how particles were produced, the rest is history. You can think of atom, molecule, this star formation, galaxy, everything now clearly explained. So that is there. Now, after discussing all these things, just, just five minutes, I will say that don't you have a question mark in our mind? Say so all these things we know, but remember, I am not going to the biology section. If you read DNA, DNA, if you read, that is another mystery. DNA is a molecule, you know, even DNA molecule contains simple atoms. Life consists of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen phosphorus, sulfur. 
snobs, only six elements, nothing else. Everything, human being, everything is dust. Cells, chromosomes, DNA, everything is produced by that. But these are again produced out of these fundamental particles. Now, you know, DNA is very wonderful. That's why we say that DNA is also something different, which you do not understand. DNA is such that it can control everything in you, everything in a living being. And uh, you just, uh, I don't take time. You just, I will tell you that if you consider a pin head, just a pin, pin head of a DNA molecule, then this contains so much information that if this information you want to write, you will need about uh, 30,000 crores of books of standard size to write this information. So all this information is contained in our DNA. And this regulate our entire life from birth to death. But I am saying that we have to write DNA. What is there in the DNA that determines your development? Everything in you. This is one of the greatest discovery from, that is also quantum biology. There is quantum chemistry, quantum biology and everything. So now, before I is a person that's coming to an end because I'm taking a lot of time. Now, you might ask that, do scientists believe in God? Now, the thing is, as I told you, interpretation of God is different here. Science believes in nature. And if you say nature is another name for God, then scientists believe in God. Most of the scientists, they think like that, then they agree on this. There is no disagreement. Only there is a disagreement when you want to bring in a personal God. Uh, you can remove this slide. Huh? Now, let me tell you one thing. Some interesting quotations I'll give you. Uh, this is black hole. This is the black hole means, you know, this is the ultimate stage of a very, very massive star. Say, the, if the mass of a star is more than 3.5 times the mass of a sun, the ultimate stage will be this black hole. It will, because of, it will collapse because of gravity into black hole. And black hole, as you know, you can go into the black hole, but you cannot come out. Nothing can come out of you, even light. Everything falls into it, but nothing can come out. That I think uh, you can, uh, all of you, now, now these things are available in net and uh, books and all that. So this is, uh, but black holes, why I wanted to show you, because these black holes can also collide. Two black holes collide. They have tremendous gravity. And when two black holes collide, there is a lot of fluctuations of space-time. Space-time fluctuate because of this, because gravity means space-time. And because of these fluctuations, gravity waves are produced. It was predicted by Einstein. And you know, these gravity waves were just in 2016 discovered experimentally. Gravity waves coming through space because of these collisions. And you know, that also establishes Einstein's prediction. So that is why Einstein is so great, the greatest of all time physicists, thinkers, and uh, how true he was. Now, coming to, you see, let me tell you, uh, there was a time when there were some philosophers, also scientists, there's St. Augustine, he was a very great uh, thinker. Once he was discussing about God and all that, that suddenly someone asked him, uh, sir, what was God doing before he made the universe? Then I, Augustine was a bit, uh, you know, irritated. He said that, well, God is always busy, you know. Before this heaven, God was busy creating hell for people like you. <laughs> so these are funny questions. So anyway, now Max Planck, you know, he's the originator of quantum theory. Max Planck, all of you know. When 
in his later part of life, he becomes very philosopher. He's a big philosopher. He studied Indian Vedanta and LD, all these things. And he posed the question, whence come I? And whither go I? That is the great unfathomable question. Science has no answer to it. Even Schrodinger question. So this is a highly philosophical question. Then Schrodinger, he wrote a book on what is life. See, all these big people, you know, they became philosophers in the latter part of life because they, they saw the universe, they saw the mind of God. So become very highly philosophical. And Schrodinger said, what is life? He wrote a book. And then he wrote another book, My View of the World in 1961. And he said in that book that I was inspired by the Vedanta and exploring beliefs in a unified consciousness. He believed that this universe is conscious. It is living. It is life. <laughs> Schrodinger said like that. And then Arthur Schwallow, another Nobel Prize winner physicist, he said that when confronted by the marvels of life and the universe, I find a need for God in the universe and in my life, if it's the necessity. Then George Greenstein, another, he said that we have stumbled upon the scientific proof of the existence of a supreme being without intending to. We did not intend to discover anything, but suddenly we find that a supreme being, a supreme intelligence, uh, as if it is presence everywhere, in the working of everywhere in this universe. This feeling is there. Einstein, Einstein. you see, Einstein was a pantheist. No, no, atheist, pantheist, at, you know, deist. Pantheist means Einstein said that I don't believe in personal God, but I believe in nature. And I say that God is nothing but nature. What is happening is nature. It is God. That's all he said. I believe in natural God. And he said that it is a great genius in nature, which is controlling this universe. An intelligence of supreme superiority. An intelligence of supreme superiority. Superiority. But he doesn't say it is a personal God. Something super intelligence. Now, Paul Dirac, you know, he was an atheist, famous scientist. He's an atheist. But when he did all this discovery, you know, uh, quantum equation, uh, concept of antiparticle, concept of quantum equation, then Pauli, Pauli, another, he was a, he simply jokingly said in a meeting that our Dirac does not believe in God. But he believes that he is the prophet of God. He is the prophet of God. It is jokingly said because prophet means that he has understood what is there in the mind of God and has given us these ideas, beautiful ideas, theories. But how true he was. Then Robert Zestro, the ultimate statement. He is the one greatest, uh, greatest of uh, one of the astronomers. He wrote some very well-known books. I don't remember the books. I read one book and about this universe. Now, the ultimate paragraph, in the ultimate paragraph of the book, he, he writes this sentence. Very, it's very well known now, and people are giving a lot of tea. He said that the scientist has scaled the mountains of ignorance. He is about to conquer the highest peak as he pulls himself up. What he finds? He is greeted. He is greeted by a band of theologians sitting there for centuries. Theologians means the greatest thinkers, philosophers, religious people. They are already there. They already discovered this idea. So this is what science leads to ultimately. Thank you all for your patience and listening to me. I don't know how much I could tell you because it's a huge topic and one hour or 30 minutes or even that. It's never sufficient. You should go through and read books and everything. But I don't know whether I have justified to the topic. I'm not sure. <laughs> Thank you all. Now we can. Uh...
Yeah, I'd like to yes, have sir. some questions. Thank you, sir, for this wonderful <laughs> lecture. Now, next uh, agenda is our question and answer with participant to our resource person. Many participants have already put some questions on the chat box, but I request all the participants who have put their question on the chat box, please directly ask to our resource person, interact with our resource person. Dear participant, many of you already put your question at the chat box. But I request you all please interact directly with our resource person. Dr. Azir Rajiv Pule, sir, if you hear me, please directly ask. Okay, I don't hear you. Rajiv Bordole, I see. Unmute Rajiv. 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 Unmute your mic, sir. Okay. Please unmute. Okay, okay. Okay, please ask questions. There should be questions, I think. I may not be able to answer, but still, I may try. Rajiv, please unmute your mic. I can hello? Or, or, hello? Hello? Yes. yes, Sandita. Rai. I am Sandita. Yes, I am from Disney College. I have one question. Okay. Yes. Sir, one sir. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, I can hear. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. okay, sir. My question is the universe is expanding according to Kabul. And also, uh, no, we are from different, different papers. In some paper, um, I got the expansion of the universe is black. And in some paper, I got. Please repeat. Yes. Unable to hear. Please repeat your question. Okay. Now I am. Your voice is broken, madam. Broken. So please repeat. There might be some technical issue. Achha, achha. Sorry then. Yes, yes. Now it is coming Man. clear. Yeah, okay. Uh, our universe is expanding. Uh, in some paper yes. I got. Uh, this is due to black energy and in some papers uh, from net I got this is due to supernova explosion. Now what do you, sir, you think about this? <laughs> I want your explanation please. Yeah, yeah. No, actually what happened, you know, the question is if you want a complete theory of this expanding universe, the question arises why the universe is like this and for that you have to propose another theory. It is called inflationary model of the universe. That is, uh, that is also justified because in the beginning, you know, about ten to the minus thirty-two second after the Big Bang, a tremendous explosion, expansion, or inflation happened. You know, it is called inflationary stage of the universe. Alan Gart proposed this, and this expansion was so quick and so tremendous that within a fraction of a second, the expansion uh, increased the size of the universe by 10 to about 50 times, 10 raised to the power 50 times. And we now think that this expansion, which is like anti-gravity, you know, gravity is attractive. This expansion is due to some unknown energy. It is called dark energy. That's the concept of dark dark energy introduced but it is a hypothetical idea it's a concept introduced but still we have to find out experimentally what is this dark energy okay. right? yes, sir. thank you thank you thank you sandita Rai, for your question now pranab sandhya sandilla if you can hear it, please ask your question uh thank you so much uh, am i audible yes yes, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Good afternoon, sir. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, 
I I know you well. I met you earlier. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I I am in Guwahati College now. Okay. Uh, I met you. I met you in Dibrugarh University uh, earlier, and uh, I also met you last time in Royal Global University. Uh, you are you are a Guwahati College principal. Yes, sir. English. Yes, sir. Are you sure? Ah, I remember yes. I meeting you. Yes, yes. yes. Oh, yes. How, how come you are interested in physics? So, so I, I, I like you. You know very well. I like okay. you. I, I, <laughs> so I your so lectures yeah. are always I, I with me. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I to, today, I, I am very grateful that Bijora College organized this webinar and by inviting you. Sir, I have, I have two questions. The first one is, uh, you talked about space time, uh, uh, space time. So, can you, for as as general um, uh, viewers or as general people, for that general people, can you please elaborate? something on space time and earth time i know you can do it space time and earth time okay. i mean earth time time earth. you means time prithvi prithvi earth time see thing is that time itself is a concept if i want to tell you about time i don't have sufficient time for that <laughs> nobody has <laughs> time is one of the most least understood concept, let me tell you. But all of us think that we know what is time. That is foolish. See, we think that our watch clock is there, we are reading time there. You are not reading time. It is motion, motion of hands, second hand, hour hand, minute hand. Just we are simply for our convenience, we are seeing that if the the hand goes from this to this, we call it one hour or one minute. It is just a day to day convenience. But time itself in physics, it has a physical meaning, not a mechanical meaning. The time that you talk about is mechanical meaning. If the clock stops running, if the clock stops, can time stop? No. Time is universal. Secondly, according to Newton, according to Einstein, we have a now new concept of time, which is quite uh, convincing. That you see, as soon as we are born, as soon as we are born, we become a part of space and time. Because the universe was born which is space and time. Before that, there was no space and time. So anything or anybody who, are, who is a part of this universe is a part of space time. Say, for example, when I am born or you are born, you are taking time with you. The time of birth, then for after a certain time, life will go. You are carrying. Now the question is, how does this time behave? Time cannot move. Time is not moving. It is already there. All of us are moving in time and space. Moving in space is observable. You go from Guwahati to some other place, you are moving to space. But motion in time is totally different. Even if you are sitting, time still there and you are moving in time. Constantly, it is an eternal motion. Motion in time is an eternal motion. This is the real meaning of time that science has given us, especially relativity, Einstein, and all that. And this is very true. Okay, Sandilla? Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. This... The same, yes, sir. You, you have made the same statement which you uh, made to us 20, maybe about uh, 25 to 28 years ago in the Burger uh, University when I oh. heard your lecture. Yes. The same statement, <laughs> same statement, same yeah, yeah. line. Uh, because that we are because moving time through is the time. same. The time, yes. time at that time and now time yes. and this time yes. cannot be different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sir, Only we have become older. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. You're right. and, anyway, yeah. but sir, one one intriguing thing is uh, I asked you this question about our time because we have different seasons. Different seasons. Four four different major seasons which we observe on Earth and which we go through. Sir, this seasonal change and time, 
sir yeah. is there anything for us to learn in that no no time time, time is uh, time is independent of season see see, see time is uh, just something uh, which always exist irrespective of anything now season is say for example you have this uh, different seasons it is because of what motion of the earth around the sun the distance between sun and earth is not the same all the time it goes on changing in the orbit sometimes you have a winter if the closer you know you have summer uh, if the distance increases you have winter so the temperature of the earth depends on the uh, variation of distance between sun and the earth and that gives rise to change in season yes 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 time yes. is the same sir, okay sir apuni eta kotha koisile kopalor likhon no hoy dna r likhon moi bishwas kolu sir that is why i i i have one question in this regard suppose hmm. how can people from different disciplines be explain that everything in this universe are living and there is nothing which is non living apni kole no 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 san sandil tell me one thing what is life i want to ask you what is life you know first you yes. must be very clear about what you mean by life from birth till death yeah. it, it 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 is life Ah. From birth till death, it is life. Yes. We go through this while moving through time. Do we, you actually we, die? We exist. No, no. We exist. Do, do, do you do you actually die? No. We have six elements of life. Six elements. The DNA which you said. So after death, after death, we do not know where we are. We do yes. not know. Yes, we do yes. not know. so yeah. we do not know whether we still exist whether we still live uh, because we talk about the soul yeah yeah uh, you're right let you're let right. let, let uh, so after that we we talk about our mm -hmm. soul say may his soul rest in peace may his soul be in eternal peace and, and so on so the yeah, soul yeah. so yeah. atma to atma to thake buli koy atma My, ase that yes. means life is it is life still there is it is it is it goes on see eta moi apna kotha ta kaun sandile satana ha jitu satana boli kaun ami consciousness okhomet satana boli kaun ta consciousness comes first consciousness life means consciousness you can feel you can feel consciousness now this consciousness is a very big topic in all branches of uh, you know philosophy religion science now life in, is impossible without consciousness it is like software you know otherwise life will be our our body will be hardware just like a computer a computer is useless without a software it is your consciousness your mind your question counts what is mind we know brain brain is a hardware doctor can find it out see it but what about the doctor does he cannot find where the mind is located but don't you think that mind exists yes mind exists this yes. is the driving power of brain your mind must dictate your brain to read to play to sleep that because is a central central like point yes huh? sir because central. sometimes you feel that huh? yeah there is a center that is the center of life center. so this mind is the you know something which still science is trying to uh, think about the in yes, biology i have seen that latest biological uh, study says that uh, that is also i don't agree with they said that brain plus consciousness if you put consciousness into brain it becomes mind but what is consciousness that is the question again where from it comes 
that is the mystery nobody knows sandila apni jane jodi mok ko etia no etia no amo apnar logot session eta korim sir pisot etia no hoy etu session apnar logot mok pisot thik ase aru eta sandila sir thik ase pisot apnar logot kotha patiba apnar bahut mane no no inquiry thik ase there is there is my last uh, last uh, uh, point uh, last point Uh, as sir has said moi he karne statement eta koisu je it is intriguing to realize that even physics is philosophical the dimension of god is much higher for us humans at this moment of time tamane aji je to topic asile modern science and the mind of god he karne it was very attractive khub attractive hoyse ei mane topic tu he karne sir e kole the dimension of god multi dimensional aru imane uporot je etiao ta mane manav jati eta mane etia bhagwanok bisari na pay no god and god will never come waiting for god sare jane waiting for god waiting for god yeah yeah yes waiting for god mane he aru roi asu ami roi asu ar roi thakim so the thank you sir for your very enlightening speech today सर आपनाक मय फोन काले लॉक पाम आको आनिबो लागबो आपनाक आमार मदले नाइस नाइस मीटिंग ओके नाइस नाइस थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर योर क्वेश्चन फॉर योर क्वेश्चन वी हैव वन क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम राजीव बटले सर ही हैज सम टेक्निकल इशू सो आई एम पुटिंग हिज क्वेश्चन ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ हिम ही हैज द रिटन हियर जे इन 2 3 इयर्स बैक आई हैव हर्ड ऑफ एन एक्सपेरिमेंट वेयर बोथ पार्टिकल एंड वेबिनार सर आई जॉइन कर सु पार्टिसिपेंट पार्टिसिपेंट इज कुड बी ऑब्जर्व एट द सेम टाइम took the royal global university to lay out a canteen of sa khai silo ejon part of sandilya sir is acha sandilya is yes sir okay 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 sir uh, i'm quoting again 2 3 years back i have heard of an experiment where both particle and wave nature of photon could be observed at the same time by firing laser to a nano wire your thought on that does it not violate the bohr's complementary principle regards son tinchukia or rajib bodle tinchukia see thing is uh there are some claims you know people make certain claims that both the properties have been found together but i don't think it is possible because even the very theory of quantum theory predicts that it is never possible in the same experiment but if you have the experiment where you design it that wave aspect as well as uh, particle aspect then you can observe it with a gap not at the same time not at the same time okay so for example when the uh, photons are passing through two slits you will get wave character okay but you see when you get wave characters but if you study how this wave is produced different intensities maximum minima you see maximum means more photons are hitting there minimum intensity means less number of photons are hitting there so if you interpret like that it is the hitting of photons that give rise to this then you can say it is there it is behaving like particles but in that sense you cannot talk about wave nature is it clear i hope See, when the is interface clear. pattern is produced photons are hitting the uh, this photographic plate or whatever it is like particles but these are not classical particles because classical particles will only follow two holes two slits directly and two two only two spots will be produced this is the uh, difference between the quantum nature of particle and classical nature of particle so in the same experiment you can interpret but you cannot observe them as particle and wave if you say it is wave properties particle property becomes secondary and if you say particle property is observed then wave becomes secondary you cannot observe it like that it is just a question of interpretation nothing else but ultimately let me tell you the ultimate reality as of today is in this universe there is neither particle nor wave nothing it is simply about 15 corner of 15 numbers of 
quantum fields quantum fields each field under conditions can produce quanta they behave like particles the field itself will behave as a wave so with, so each particle is associated with a quantum field this is a new concept is coming and that is the reality okay thank you sir i hope uh, rajit bodle sir has got the answer uh how we have bijay sir if you hear me if you can directly ask to our resource person i want to ask one question am i was dawar sir yes sir yes please uh, uh, hello thank you sir yes yes yeah for very nice and informative talk okay Actually, i met yeah i met you long ago in dibrugarh university actually i went to for contributed oral presentation there i met you in 2002 and 2002. i am the yeah 2002 2002 long ago and okay. i am the first graduate physics graduate student of vidyana mahavidyalaya <laughs> okay <laughs> uh -huh. very good okay uh. husain sir you can put your question hello hello sir Okay, okay, Hello. please come on. Sir, uh, nice to hear to you after decades. Uh, I was from 1992 based from Dibrugarh University. And oh, Namdugi, Namdugi. So yeah, Jawahar Hussain. Two number one is also joining ah, with you. Ah, Jawahar Hussain. Okay, okay, nice, nice, nice to hear you. Okay, okay. Very <laughs> good. Two number one is also there. She is also listening to you. Okay. Uh, Two number one. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I might. I have a simple question. Two number one, you know. Yes, yes. We are from same base. So, to now, okay, to now, and me. Was on to Hazarika. Was on to Hazarika. To now, Borua. We are from the same okay. base. I, okay, I informed her. I informed her last evening. So she is also joining you. <laughs> the talk. Okay, very nice of her. Okay. Uh, <laughs> She's okay, a very so, brilliant um, student. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. He's Texas at Texas now. Uh, sir, my simple question is: uh, Can I? Uh, can we have? Uh, can we know the actual size of the universe right now after the Big Bang? Well, you see, when you say size of our universe, this is called visible universe. Visible. That is how far our telescopes can look at a galaxy. Okay. Now, because what we see is literally nothing but the light coming from the galaxy for example say today i observe a new galaxy so suppose a new galaxy is discovered but this galaxy is not the galaxy at the moment you see suppose it is billions of light years so light while coming to my telescope took billion billion years so i see today what the galaxy was like before billions years ago i see the past only past now the question is there may be because of the expanse there may be stars beyond that where even if light is coming we are not yet receiving them it will take so many years so many years so i think with time as more and more telescopes are powerful telescopes are discovered we shall discover more and more galaxies and size will be bigger so still it is not defined there may be many more galaxies beyond our observations today and there may be from which light will never reach us it will not be able to reach us but the thing is what we should say this doesn't mean that universe is infinite only thing is that light cannot reach us from that point universe most interesting i told you universe has no center every point is a center of the universe because wherever you are in the universe if you look around yourself everything is identical everything in all directions so where is the center nothing secondly universe has no boundary it is it has no boundary but it is not infinite it is finite why it is because it is like a surface 
you know you can visualize the two dimensional surface of a sphere the sphere may be bigger and bigger but the surface has a boundary uh, no boundary it's a over the surface you go from one point to another point there is no boundary but still the area is finite similarly we say that this universe is like a three dimensional surface of a four dimensional hypersphere so everything on this surface you know this surface has no boundary but it is finite in area this is the concept thank you sir we are now thank seeing you, only a small part of this universe sir multiverse ko thame the multiple universe ko multiverse yes konindra tumi wa hangadik course prashna korisa una मल्टीवर्स हल कि इट कम्स फ्रम क्वान्टम भेकुअम कन्सेप्ट मैं भिकम क्या कैसेन इज भेकुअम इज एक्साइटेड फ्लक्सुएन वेन फ्लक्सुएन अकर्स से हायर एनार्जी टू लोअर एनार्जी दें उ से देर मे वि बबुल्स एपियरिंग कन्डेसेशन अफ भेकुअम बबुल्स डिफरेन्ट बबुल्स भेरी माइन साइड साडेनली वन अफ दि बबुल सफार्स ए बिग बैंग लाइक दिस and we get this universe so now many theorists they propose that if this is possible for our universe what about the other bubbles so each bubble might give rise to a different universe so in this way there may be infinite number of universes theoretically and we do not know whether the laws of physics laws of science will be the same in those universes they may be different This is the idea okay. of multiverse. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, sir. May I continue, sir? sir? Okay, please. Ranjana Bordul, Ranjana Bordul. Hello, yes. sir. Am I audible? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you are. Sir, my Ranjana Borda Siluetia Borda Bordul is hello. Rajiv Bordul is wife. Ah, Kony, my. Okay. <laughs> good. Very good. Kony, my Rajiv. एक्सपाशन इन फ्यूचार पसिबिलिटी हम निकी रिभार्स प्रसेस तो आरम्भ हम मैं कन्ट्रेक्शन आरम्भ पॉइंट अफ सींगारिटी बहुत फिजिक्स बहुत कलकुलेन फिजिक्स प्रेडिक्शन इट डिपेन्स अन हट इज दास अफ दि इूनिभार्स देटेड क्रिटिकल डेन्सिटी Amount rho zero critical density. If the observed density of the universe is less than this critical density, observed density is less than this critical density, then the universe will keep on expanding because density less means there will be not enough matter to attract each other. Gravity gravity can never overtake because if the universe has to Uh, slow down gravity must overtake the expansion expansion is repulsive gravity is attractive so if the mass is less it will go on expanding it will expand then it will be it will expand to we say it's just fluidity nothingness ultimately but if the reverse is there suppose the, we find that the density is more than the critical density because still we do not know the exact density of the universe because if there is we call dark energy dark matter is also there if dark matter also we can find out the mass then maybe the critical density may come out to be the density of the uh, present universe may be more than the critical density in that case a time will come when this rate of expansion which is now accelerating this acceleration may slow down slowly so as it starts slowing down time it will be slower and slower and once it is slower in expansion gravity will overtake so all the masses all the galaxies will start attracting each other 
and ultimately they will collapse it is called big crunch big bang to big crunch so again it will be that earlier stage and then okay. it may again have a big bang it is called oscillating universe expansion then contraction again expansion context oscillating universe this is thank the, you so much, sir. Uh, thank you thank you thank you Okay. okay. Then I should not ask that time. I want to continue. Ek Hello, sir. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah, please ask briefly. Like, one question. Only one question. Only, only one question. Uh, what I said, uh, you already mentioned that the interaction potential between two quarks is just inverse to what is observed in the case of long range forces like electrostatic forces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want yeah, to right. know what is the nature of the interaction potential between quark and quark interaction? Okay. If it is like that, how does device shielding or spinning effect takes place in UGP? I mean, quark gluon plasma, which is actually pre existing in the primordial universe model of the universe. So, first question is what is the type of, what is the analytic form of interaction potential between quark and quark? Within any two quarks. Ah, this this you can find in literature. This is different proposals are there, but uh, you see you, you you must find in literature nothing else. But the thing is there is a scale. Ah. Quark 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 interactions. It is in chromodynamics. It's a gluons. You know, it is because of the exchange of gluons. You know. You know. Now if it is like that. Then it, hmm. In in quantum uh, in quantum chromodynamics, actually in quantum field theory, concept of force is replaced by exchange of quanta. In uh, electromagnetism, it is photon exchange. In quark, strong force, it is exchange of gluons. You know, glue. And the thing is that these gluons have mass. Gluons have also a color. They have mass. So it is a very special type of quanta. Photon has no mass. So this is the, so that way you can find out the scale of interaction, how it depends on the distance. It will come out that as distance increases, it becomes stronger. The strength, the coupling, you call it coupling, coupling constant, you can find out, it will be stronger. You can find out in uh, any literature or even in Thank you, Karmakar sir, for your question. Now, Gyanjuti Raskwai, if you would like to ask any question, please ask briefly. Can you hear me? We cannot hear Gyanjuti Raskwa. Can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Please increase your volume. We cannot hear you. Raskwa. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Please increase your volume. Hello. Hello. We cannot hear clearly. Hello. Yes. Hello. 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 I think there is no contact. Some technical issue. Okay. Technical. Sorry, Rasmus. Huh? What, is, what is the difference, difference between black hole and singularity? Okay. Black hole and singularity. Oh, singularity. Singular, see, singularity is a mathematical concept. Achha. In physics, there cannot be singularity. Remember this. Singularity yeah. is, means something infinite. Infinite have no place in physics. Now, when I say there is a singularity in the universe, that's a classical, you know, when quantum mechanics doesn't say like that. Because if you look at the uncertainty principle, you see, uncertainty principle, delta x, delta p, product is zero. This delta x, you can never make it zero. Hello. For a singularity, it should be exactly zero. Yes. So uncertainty principle prevents the existence of zero size in quantum mechanics. Yes. Secondly, black hole. Black hole has this very, very absurd, very interesting property. Black hole is simply 
You see, all the masses of a star, ultimately, because of gravity, they just contract into such a small region. Even then, it is not zero. Yes. Because of quantum yeah. mechanics, it cannot be zero. But the smallest, you can calculate, you know, let me tell you, there is a Planck scale. Planck scale, minimum size you can have. Minimum size we can have is about 10 to the power minus uh, 37 meter or 34 meter minus. We cannot go beyond that. Minimum time is there, 10 to the power minus 43 seconds, like that. These are called Planck scale. So even if a black hole shrinks, it cannot shrink to a point. So, and black hole, the properties you already know, is an infinite gravity. Now, that is infinite gravity means in terms of Einstein's general relativity, we say the space time yeah. around a black hole no, no, no. is so curved, no. extreme curvature. Nothing can move out. It is like a bottomless pit, you know, bottomless well. You, you fall into the well, but you can't come out. Mm. That is the curvature of space-time around black hole. But now also, you know, Stephen Hawking said that black hole is not always black. Yeah. It can emit Hawking radiation. Radiation. That is a quantum theory, Hawking radiation that you already, yeah. So they're beautiful, very exciting ideas are there, but they are all true. Okay, sir, okay. okay. Thank you, Hello. sir, thank you, thank you. Hello. Yes. Hello. Gyanjuti Raskwa. Hello. You can. Yes. Yes. Hear me. Yes. Now I am audible. Am I audible? Yes. Yes. Now am yes, I audible? Yes. audible. Okay. Yeah. 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 You are audible. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir, for your very wonderful and nice presentation. You have <laughs> presented the most uh, toughest topic of physics so simply to us. <laughs> thank you once again for that. <laughs> Sir, nice uh, quantum physics itself is a very difficult subject and it becomes more difficult with the invention of this Higgs bosons and Higgs field. Mm -hmm. uh, so my question is that the Higgs field uh, latest research and invention has showed that and thesis us that Higgs field does not interact with matter. That's why photon particle has no mass. But mm -hmm. we know Planck's, according to Planck's story equal to H nu, then photon must have energy. Then how can light, that means photon penetrating heat field, reaching us without interacting with it? Mm. This is my first question. Okay. I have a second question. So in 2012, uh, Higgs, Higgs, uh, Higgs bosons de detected practically uh, mm. in, in an experiment performed in Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland. Mm. So what mm. what what are the properties of Higgs bosons and how these particles detected at that laboratory, sir? I think uh, about this mass, you know, mass of photon and all that. Remember, I told you, concept of mass yes. is not unique because of Einstein's E equal to mc square. If energy is there, we can say mass is also there, yes. right? Yes. But what Higgs particle, when I say Higgs particle gives mass to electron proton, we mean this is mass, this mass is measure of inertia. You know, if you look at the higher secondary physics, mass is actually a measure of inertia. Now, there are two types of mass, you know, rest mass, M0, and relativistic mass, M. Mass which appears because of motion. Now, when you say that photon has no mass, yeah. it is the rest mass. Okay? Yes. The rest mass. But you know, photon can never be at rest. Can it be? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No. So when it is moving with the constant speed C in free space, it is tremendous energy equal to H nu. Yes. And that is equivalent to a mass, e, e by C square. Yes. So Higgs thing is that when you say that photons were produced, that means it was when photons produced immediately C speed. So there yes. is not enough time to interact with Higgs bosons. 
Oh, I see now. Yes. I, that is my thinking. You see. See. Yes, yes. You, you can never. <laughs> the photon, you know, this light. Light is such a field which made Einstein so famous. Einstein be, became famous because of light. The speed C. Yes, sir. Only he understood the significance of C. Nobody before him. And that made him Einstein what he is. Now we know there are three constants in this universe. Speed of light C, Gauss uh, constant H, and the gravitational constant Z. Who said this is like trinity of gods. Their values are so well tuned. Sir, 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 yeah. Sir, can we say like that it is constant till that? It may not be constant in future. Yeah, yeah that's right. Because see, we, we yes, cannot yes. say what happens. Uh, yes. See, as of now. Yes. And it is like that since the beginning, 1400 crores of years, till today. So, yes. think of 1400 crores of years. Yes, yes. Nobody knows. Even after a second, I don't know whether I will be there. Nobody knows. This is quantum mechanics. Yes. Nothing is certain. What is happening next? Physics or science never claim that it is the ultimate truth. This is the speed of science. Right. Science right. is a journey of discovery. New and new things. Once people thought Newton is right, is the ultimate truth. Now we find Newton is not the ultimate. Not, not, Newton was not Einstein. ultimate. Einstein. Yes. Who knows? Later on, there may be another Einstein or some new. Mm -hmm. no, this, is, this is the secret of life, the secret of creation. God doesn't want to know us everything. If we know everything today, we will have no respect for God. We shall have, we shall never think about God. This is another mystery of creation. God has created us in such a way thus far and no further. limit quantum limit. Yes, sir. <laughs> sir, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gyanji Raskwa. Sir, the second question. Gyanji Raskwa, we have another participant to ask. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you. Thank okay, you, okay. sir. Thank okay, you. you can uh, Hi, later on, you Hi, can sir. discuss with our resource person, no problem. Directly, you can okay, mail or we will share the mail, 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 mail address of sir. Okay. Huh? You can contact. No problem. Sir, was any question? Oh, okay, thank you. One sir. more question from Bijoy, sir. sir. Oh. Sir, I'm quoting. He has some technical. Oh. On behalf of him, I'm quoting. Uh, he say he write, he wrote that the law of physics came after Big Bang. But are the laws transient and may not be valid after a certain time, maybe thousands of years from now, as the space and time is in expanding? Is it clear, sir? I mean, the I... Physics is uh, correct till today, he says. No? Laws yes, of physics. Sir. Law, law physics came after Big Bang. Okay. But are the laws transient and may not be valid? After certain time, maybe thousand of well, years. This, see, 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 thing is that uh, I think uh, he is talking about the future. What is going to be yes. going to happen in the future? Yes, yes. Physics, you know, we mainly study what is happening as of now. Okay. Yes. Because future we cannot experiment on. We cannot do an experiment to study the future. Yes. What is happening? in the world as you observe today till today and from the beginning of this universe till today whatever has been observed or whatever has been found have been explained quite well by the laws of physics but what is going to happen after another thousand years nobody knows i think only god can answer if god is there <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. That's no answer to this. But thing this is, is that we cannot say that these laws of physics are transient. Transient is not a good word. That is, okay. we say laws of physics 
are true they found to be valid permanent till of till today but later we do not okay. thank you sir another question from mrs anjali bosumatari okay uh, from kokrajhar gop college mm. uh, she has asked uh, can time exist without space no no they okay time and space create would create it simultaneously with the big bang okay. because if you look at the einstein's theory of relativity space and time are interrelated you cannot separate them see why okay. i let me, let, me, let me give an example you know time concept of time time is associated with changes time is associated with motion motion takes place in space so if you want to remove time then there will be no changes these things are there so remember space and time cannot be separated but newton separated it and he was wrong okay thank you sir um uh, akashdi bosistha and amandi bosistha uh, he has some question so if you can hear me please ask directly to our resource person uh hello sir uh, actually i had a question like regarding time like uh, okay. is there a natural instance uh, like Akashdi where Bosistha. objects go back in time or like uh, yeah. can we go back in time because all we are seeing as that uh, we are going forward in time like to the future but mm -hmm. uh, is there an instance where objects go backwards like in time like that uh, see <clears throat> actually this past concept of past future this is this we experience in the micro world it is nothing like that in the okay. atomic universe the universe of atoms and all that there is no distinction between past future what is possible now it was also possible in the past that can be proved but okay. in our day to day life the time that we are experiencing it has only one direction okay to the future okay that is from past to future reverse is not possible now there are some movies hollywood movies where it is shown that suddenly a person is moving backward in time and he is going back and seeing what was there and all that that this is only fictional time travel concept is there okay time travel concept it's a concept the time travel future is possible okay but past is not possible for because of many reasons suppose you assume that you can visit your past and suppose you go back in time and see your grandparents when they they were young and suppose you want to kill them then who, how do you live yeah that that causes the paradox this, thing, this it comes up uh, nonsensical you know yeah <laughs> so that is why i mean uh, in our day to day experiences day to day life we say that time moves time actually not moves we move forward in time we cannot move okay. backward in time time is there only one direction that you can move only in one way that is forward okay that is also follows from thermo thermodynamics it is called yeah uh, entropy, but you know, sir uh, yeah but what about the objects present near a black hole or something like that because uh, i heard that i don't know uh, when objects fall inside a black hole then they can travel backwards in time or something like that what about that no no that is uh, i think i do not know where you have found it see black hole concept is something like this suppose uh, suppose there are two astronauts okay two astronauts in the space and yeah. one of them suddenly falls into the black hole other is uh, outside the black hole at a distance what he will observe that you can discuss the astronaut who is far away from the black hole you will find yeah. that the for the other astronaut near the black hole for him time is infinity i mean it's a time stand still okay. it's always there 
time doesn't mm -hmm. move. It doesn't move in time. So this okay. concept is there. So it becomes infinite. So that's why we say that once you are in a black hole, time stops. Yeah. Time stops and you are, you will remain as you are for all that time. You will have eternity. As observed by the other astronauts. Ah, who yes. Didn't outside, block. outside. Yes. And, and uh, what happened to the real me? Yeah. And uh, what what happens to the real person who falls into the black hole? For him, what happens? Thing is that uh, you see, when uh, actually this is a concept, and yeah. we cannot think in terms of human beings, because yeah. you know much before you let me tell you. Suppose uh, you want to visit a black hole. What will happen? Let me tell you. Yeah, it's called an event horizon boundary around the black hole. Yeah. So as soon as you near the boundary, that uh, horizon, tremendous gravity will be there such that yeah. the gravity on head and gravity on your leg will be different. You will be torn yeah. apart quickly. Yeah, that is, yeah, that is called spaghettification. Yeah, so this is called fine. tidal force. So you will you not remain as a human being, actually. You will be torn apart like anything. So your experiences will not be there. <laughs> This is the okay, but uh, like there is an exception to that too. I have heard that uh, for bigger black holes, that the tidal gravity or something that is like so small that something crossing that horizon might even live. Like if that is a living thing, the spaghettification might not occur. Like is that true? Uh, what is that? Let me let me tell you one thing. Let me tell you. See. There's a big business going on in film industry, Hollywood film industry. You see, whenever some ideas are proposed theoretically in physics, you know, okay. these are concepts proposed. Immediately they take it and make a film using human beings. That science has said that this is possible and they will say all these stories fiction. And when we see such movies, I mean, non-scientists or non-physicists, they think, oh, this is possible, then this is possible. Actually, see, uh, is actually not possible. Thank you, thank you, sister. If you have any query yeah. later on, you can contact with our resource person. Okay. Sure, sure. Thank you for your question. Uh, yeah. I think you, uh, no more question is there. Then okay. we can end the session. Uh, our next session is uh, put up thanks. But before going to put up thanks, uh, I like to share some information with participant that I have already shared the feedback link in the setter box. Uh, please fill up this form and submit, then you will receive auto, auto generated certificate. Uh, now moving to our last agenda, put up thanks. To do this one, may I now request Dr. Nilanjana Borua, Associate Professor Department of Botany, to present put up thanks for today's webinar. Over to Nilanjana, madam. Madam, please come with video if possible. Madam, we cannot hear you. Please unmute. She has already unmute, but please increase your volume. Nilanjana, madam, we cannot hear you. Dr. Nilanjana Burwa, madam. We cannot hear you, madam. Sanjit, you have given me. Okay, so let's anyway. Might, might be some technical issue. Uh, so it is my privilege to present a uh, of thanks for today's webinar. First of all, the, we are very much grateful to our honorable resource person, Professor Omarinda Rasput, for accepting our for this webinar. We must thank Professor Omarinda Rasput, sir, for sharing his experience, knowledge on the topics with our participant. I'm very much confident that 
our participant has benefited from these topics from his lecture thank you sir once again for this wonderful okay, lecture in the second i would like to thanks our honorable principal of vidya mahavidyalaya for providing us this opportunity to organize this kind of the webinar thank you sir for supporting please thank you sir now i would like to extend my vote of thanks to all the participant principal from different colleges respected faculty from different colleges research scholar uh, student uh, for joining with us without you this program would have not been successful thank you all for being here with us the last uh, i would like to thanks all iqc member of birjara mahavidyalaya for their continuous support to organize the, this kind of the webinar thank you all with these few words i conclude my vote of thanks for today's webinar have a nice day stay safe thank you all Bye. keep back thank you thank you all all of you thank, thank you sir thank you okay thank you see you then okay okay nice